Today let's discuss about the anatomy of female reproductive tract. Female reproductive tract includes two groups of organs, external genital organs and the internal genital organs. And the external genital organs, okay, the first topic we'll be discussing is the uh, vulva. Now, vulva includes the mons pubis, labia majora, labia minora, clitoris and vestibule. Okay, vulva is the external genital organ of a female which includes the following structures. Okay, let me show you all the individual structures so that you can have a clear idea about what we are discussing. Okay, now in this image, this thick pad of connective tissue which has this pubic hairs, okay, which contains this pubic hairs, this region is known as mons pubis okay now these thick folds of skin which are present laterally okay these thick folds of skin which are present laterally these are known as labia majora okay now let me show you what exactly are labia minora now, these thick folds of skin, okay, now these thick folds of skin which are present a medial to the labia majora, okay, these two thick folds of skin which are present medial to the labia majora. So, these, uh, these folds are known as labia minora, okay. Now, what else you have to keep in mind now guys once concentrate the labia majora okay the labia majora they are uniting posteriorly and forms a structure known as a posterior a commissure okay posterior commissure now in the same way even labia minora labia minora they will also meet posteriorly and forms a structure known as a four a sheet okay so four sheet is a structure because of the fusion of the labia minora and the posterior commissure is because of the fusion of the labia majora now if you can if you if you can see in this diagram the labia minora they are fusing even anteriorly over an erectile body so this erectile body is known as clitoris okay the erectile body for which the labia minora fuses anteriorly is known as a clitoris now we have discussed about the mons pubis we have discussed about the labia majora mons pubis we have discussed labia majora we have discussed labia minora we have discussed and clitoris we have discussed okay now we are left with the vestibule so what exactly is the vestibule is a triangular space which is present between a clitoris anteriorly and a foresheet posteriorly so this space is known as vestibule okay now after knowing this terminology we'll be discussing about some of the most important mcq related questions for our exams let's discuss about the homologous structures so what exactly is homologous structures guys homologous structures are similar structures in their counterparts for example labia majora so this labia majora is similar to labia majora in a female is similar to a scrotum okay a scrotum in males labia minora is homologous to a ventral aspect of penis okay ventral aspect of the penis or penal urethra now clitoris a clitoris is homologous to a glands of penis okay so these are the very very important mcq questions for board exams now let's discuss about the embryology now labia majora are derived from 
means the, this labia majora embryologically take their origin from labia majora takes their origin from genital swellings okay a very very important question labia minora derived from genital folds clitoris takes its origin from genital tubercle okay now after studying about the embryology let's discuss a very important mcq okay all of the structures like you know in our exams these are the kinds of questions they will be asking you okay we know what exactly is vestibule okay into the vestibules there are certain structures opening so in our exams they will be asking you all of the following structures are opening into vestibule except so you should know what and all the structures which are opening into the vestibule now structures opening into the vestibule are let me show an image so that you will understand clear guys once concentrate here into the vestibule into the vestibule we are having an opening once concentrate we are having an opening this opening so this opening is a urethral orifice okay now here below that we are i'm having one more opening here you can see so this opening is the vaginal opening okay vaginal opening is also opening into the vestibule of the vulva now apart from that you can see here two glands are there two glands with their ducts okay the ducts of these glands are also opening into the vestibule so ducts of which glands guys can you know this glands can you say out it's the ducts of bartholin's gland bartho lins gland okay ducts of bartholin's glands are also opening into the vestibule now here in this image you can't see but here two more glands are also opening the ducts of even uh, two more glands are opening here what are they it's the ducts of okay skinny's gland okay so even ducts of skin's gland is also going to open into the vestibule so we have discussed all of these following okay all of these are the structures which are opening into the vestibule okay what are they it's a urethral orifice okay urethral orifice vaginal opening okay next ducts of bartholin's gland okay next ducts of a skin's gland next the blood supply so this vulva is getting its blood supply from okay as it's all going definitely needs to gather blood supply okay now the blood supply of this vulva region is getting its blood supply from the internal a pudendal artery okay so internal pudendal artery is giving the blood supply for the vulva now nerve innervation it is a pudendal nerve okay the nerve innervation or the nerve supply for the vulva is coming from the pudendal nerve guys it will be very good if you can remember the root value of the pudendal nerve the root value of the pudendal nerve is from the s2 to s4 s2 s3 s4 segments okay now lymphatic supply now the lymphatic drainage from the this external genitalia that's the vulva is going to be drained into inguinal lymph nodes okay but one important point which i want to highlight here it's the blood lymphatic drainage from the vulva it's going to be drained into lymph nodes there is no doubt okay that's the inguinal lymph nodes but the clitoris now the lymphatic drainage from the clitoris is going to be drained into a special kind of lymph nodes known as rosen muller's lymph nodes 
okay rosenmuller's lymph nodes are the lymph nodes which are getting the lymphatic drainage from the uh, clitoris these rosenmuller lymph nodes are also known as lymph nodes of clockwet okay please keep that point in your mind very very important mcq for our exams okay next after that let's discuss something more important about the bartholinis gland guys where exactly is this bartholinis gland is located the site first of all before that uh, what is the function of this bartholinis gland bartholinis gland it's going to produce the alkaline mucus during the sexual activity or the sexual intercourse okay now what is the site of this bartholinis gland bartholinis gland is located in the super facial perineal pouch okay we'll be having a superficial perineal pouch and the deep perineal pouch now this uh, bartholinis gland is located in the superficial perineal pouch very important mcq bartholinis ducts are lined by so we'll be having a gland further we'll be having a, a duct see we know that the ducts of the bartholinis glands are going to open into the vestibule there is no doubt in that now these ducts are lined by which kind of epithelium very very important mcq okay the bartholinis duct is lined by columnar epithelium okay important now bartholinis ducts open it guys i have already shown you okay these are the bartholinis gland okay once concentrate here see these ducts are opening into the vestibule but they will ask you the exact location into the vestibule where exactly these ducts are opening now these ducts are opening at a junction okay now is the exact terminology you should keep in mind now bartholinis ducts are opening at junction of anterior a two third and a posterior one third okay it's the it's the junction of anterior two third and the junction of posterior one third of the vulva in a groove between labia minora and hymen okay exactly you have to keep in mind is this is a question which was repeated i think um, um, like you know uh, two to three times is the same exact question repeated in uh, different different exams okay now bartholinis duct is going to be open in a junction between anterior two third and the posterior one third of the vulva that too in a groove between the labia minora and hymen now bartholinis cyst guys this is the bartholinis gland and this bartholinis gland is having its duct if this duct is blocked what's going to happen all the secretions from this bartholinis gland is going to accumulate and forms a cyst okay so this bartholinis cyst so there are certain important mcqs okay around the bartholinis cyst so what are they bartholinis cyst is the most common cyst of vulva okay one important mcq and what is the most common cause for this i have already said it's a blockage of the duct because of infections okay infections can be a cause and what is if it is an infection there should be a causative organism what is that causative organism the most commonly the causative organism is the most common causative organism is e coli okay infection with this e coli is going to cause the blockage of the duct that's going to form the cyst okay now a patient came to you to your clinic and that patient is having this bartholinis cyst as a clinician how you are going to treat it so now the treatment of this bartholinis cyst is very very important question it is a incision and drainage okay so incision and drainage is the treatment of choice for the bartholinis cyst now what should be done if it is bartholinis abscess if in the mcq if they are asking what is the treatment of choice for the bartholinis abscess okay okay this is again recurring again and these infections are coming again and again so then you are not going to do this uh, incision and drainage then you will be doing marsupialization okay marsupialization is the treatment of choice for the bartholinis abscess okay what is exactly is uh, marsupialization you are going to give an incision and you are going to evert the edge for example if this is the cyst you gave a incision 
okay you are going to evert the edges outside and you are going to suture it okay you are not going to close it again okay now this is the marsupialization is the treatment of choice for the batholinies abscess okay having said that let's continue with the internal genital organs okay now internal genital organs let's start with the vagina okay before that what are all the structures which are coming under internal genital organs it's the vagina next uterus fallopian tubes and ovaries these are the internal genital organs of a, a female now let's start with the vagina now walls first important point is the walls guys what exactly is vagina for example let me show you here in this image guys concentrate vagina is a fibromuscular tube okay vagina is a fibromuscular tube tube like structure as it's a tube like structure it's going to have the anterior wall posterior wall and lateral walls but i want you guys to keep in mind see this anterior wall is shorter okay when compared to the posterior wall posterior wall is more longer okay this is what i want to put in your mind the anterior wall of the vagina is shorter in length and the posterior wall is longer in length now anterior wall is almost 7.5 cm posterior wall is almost 9 cm in length okay now this vagina it is a fibromuscular tube which is connecting the external genitalia which is vulva with the uterus okay now after discussing about the walls i just want you guys to uh, to properly concentrate here this upper part of the vagina okay see here in this upper part of the vagina okay this is upper part of the vagina see the cervix is protruding into the vagina which is forming a special pouch like structures okay uh, let me highlight it for you so that you will better understand as the cervix is protruding okay uh, as, um, just wait i will show you with the different color as the cervix is protruding into the upper part of the vagina it is creating certain pouches see these pouch like structures so these are known as fornices okay now because of the cervix protruding into the vagina it's going to form the fornix okay again see here this is the anterior fornix okay and this is the a posterior fornix now as well as you will be having the lateral fornices also okay now what is the important point anterior fornix is the shallowest fornix and the posterior fornix is the deepest fornix that's what i want to put in your mind mcq okay anterior fornix lateral fornix posterior fornix which is the deepest fornix it is the posterior fornix which is the deepest okay now after studying about the walls of vagina and the fornices of the vagina let's discuss about the epithelium line now this vagina it's lined by okay now this vagina is lined by a special kind of epithelium okay what exactly is that it's a it's not even special kind of epithelium it's a normal epithelium uh, it's a stratified okay squamous epithelium okay the lining of the vagina is from the stratified squamous epithelium repeated mcq for our board exams okay now having said that let discuss about the inhabitant bacteria we have discussed about the walls we have discussed about fornix we have discussed about the epithelium now let's discuss about the inhabitant bacteria now physiologically there are certain good bacteria which is present in the vagina so what is that bacteria anyone i think most of you guys who are seeing this you know it it is a doder leans bacteria okay doder leans bacteria is is the inhabitant bacteria which is present in the vagina now let's discuss some of the important points about this dodelins bacteria okay now this dodelins bacteria which is a lactobacilli okay this dodelins bacteria is a lactobacilli okay 
as it's a lactobacilli, it's going to produce lactic acid. Okay, it's going to produce lactic acid in the vagina. Now, what is the importance with that? Okay, as lact as we know, lactic acid is a acid. So, as there is lactic acid production in the vagina, in the vaginal a pH is going to be acidic. Okay, now guys, keep in your mind the vaginal pH is acidic, which is almost around 4.5. Okay, very very important MCQ. Vaginal pH is acidic, which is almost around 4.5. Now, in our exams, they might be asking you, just tell me the conditions where the vaginal pH is maximally acidic. Okay, maximum acidic pH, maximum acidic pH in the vagina is seen during is seen during pregnancy okay during pregnancy it becomes more acidic and the same vaginal pH will become basic okay more alkaline basic during anyone during menstruation okay during menstruation the vaginal pH become more basic why because we know that the our blood is more alkaline the pH of our blood is almost around 7.4 as this alkaline blood is passing through the vagina it becomes more basic okay now and also during menopause okay during menopause the vaginal pH will become more basic okay now let's uh, discuss after discussing about the bacteria now, what and all other important points we have to keep in mind, okay? Now, let's discuss about the anatomical relations. Guys, this is very, very important. You should know as a doctor, okay? You should know what and all the relations with the vagina, anterior relations, posterior relations and the lateral relations, okay? If I am if I'm, uh, explaining you by just drawing an uh, image, that, that's not going to be more effective. So that, let me show you an image where you can appreciate that relations okay now once concentrate guys here now this is the vagina this is the anterior wall of the vagina this is the posterior wall of the vagina this is the posterior wall this is the anterior wall guys once concentrate anterior to the vagina okay which structures do we have guys anterior to the vagina anterior to the vagina we are having urinary bladder that's the one structure so this is urinary bladder which is anterior to vagina okay now in the same way anterior to vagina we are also having a urethra okay the first structure is urinary bladder the second structure which is present anterior to vagina is the urethra okay now once concentrate on the posterior wall on the posterior wall in the upper part okay See, it's the post. Now we are discussing about the posterior walls of the vagina and its relations. See, the posterior wall of the vagina is related with a pouch in the uppermost part. So, this pouch is known as, okay, pouch of Douglas. Okay, the pouch of Douglas or cul de sac. Okay, the posteriorly, the the vaginal wall is in relation with the pouch of Douglas. Now, in the middle region, okay, in the middle one third, the vaginal wall is in relation with the, what is this structure guys? This is the rectum. So, in the middle, see, upper one third, it is related with the pouch of Douglas. A middle one third, it is related with the ampulla of rectum. Okay, very very important MCQ. Now, in the same way, the lower one third, okay, lower one third of the vaginal wall is in relation with the perineal body, okay, which is present here. Okay, so so these are the anatomical relations anteriorly and posteriorly. Now let's rewrite so that you will be getting an idea. Okay, now anatomical relations. Now anteriorly. The vagina is in relation with the urinary 
bladder okay plus urethra now posteriorly what do we have upper one third we have pouch of douglas middle one third we have ampulla of rectum and the lower one third we are having a perineal body okay very very important mcqs now lateral now this vagina is laterally in relation with okay so this is a very important uh, you know relation which you should by heart definitely you have to by heart these things okay now laterally it was in relation with the macken rod okay ligament okay i can't show you in this image but laterally this is the vaginal wall laterally this vaginal wall is supported by the macken rods ligament and the levator ani muscles okay these are the lateral relations okay guys now let's uh, discuss about the other important points which you need to be keeping in mind for our exams okay now the types of vaginal epithelial cells so what exactly i'm talking about see guys the vaginal epithelium is a stratified squamous epithelium which we know it there is no doubt guys but here i want you to remind vaginal epithelium is a stratified squamous epithelium no doubt but in a newborn if in exam if they are asking you in a newborn in in wait in newborn the epithelium okay lining the vagina is transitional epithelium okay so transitional epithelium is lining the a vaginal wall in a newborn female okay now let's come with the types of vaginal epithelial cells guys in the vagina there are three different types of epithelial cells which are known as let me rewrite for you okay parabasal cells okay intermediary cells intermediate cells and superficial cells okay now these are the three different types of vaginal epithelial cells which are present in the vagina but what is the important points you have what are the important mcqs you have to keep in mind guys the number of the parabasal cells or intermediate cells or superficial cells depends on the hormones what does exactly mean see if in a female if there is no fluctuation of uh, if there is no fluctuation of any of the hormones hormones in the sense you know that uh, uh, estrogen and progesterone if there is no fluctuation uh, between estrogen and progesterone means there is no high amounts of estrogen and there is no high amounts of progesterone if there is no hormonal dominance then the parabasal cells will be more in number see parabasal cells will be more in number during no hormonal okay dominance there is no hormonal dominance at all but intermediary cells will be more in number during anyone intermediary cells will be more in number during progesterone dominance okay what does it exactly mean see progesterone when the levels of progesterone will be there more in the body the second half of the menstrual cycle or the luteal phase during luteal phase the progesterone is going to be the more dominant hormone so that during the second half of the menstrual cycle intermediary cells will be more in number okay now superficial cells superficial cells will be more in number during estrogen dominance okay now estrogen when you will be having more amount of estrogen in the body estrogen will be more during the first half of the menstrual cycle which is a proliferatory phase 
are the follicular phase okay now please keep these important points in mind okay very very important topic for our exams okay now let's discuss about the secretions in the vagina okay guys definitely in the vagina you can see the secretions but what is that important point which you should remember is the is you know the secretions in the vagina are not exactly fr coming from the vaginal glands why because there are no glands in vagina okay vagina have the secretions but there are no glands present in the vagina so from where do these secretions come from okay now the secretions in the vagina are coming from the majorly majorly from the cervix this is the cervical glands which are producing the mucus and that mucus is going to dribble down into the vagina okay so this is a very important mcq no glands in the vagina and the secretions are coming from the cervix now blood supply okay now let's discuss about the blood supply of supply okay now blood supply to the vagina is coming from anyone it's the descending vaginal artery okay so descending vaginal artery is giving the blood supply internal pudendal artery okay next middle rectal artery okay these three blood vessels are giving the blood supply for the vagina very important mcq to be kept in mind now developed from guys what exactly i am talking about see this vagina see let me show you this is the vagina and this vagina is in you no know, is in uh, connection with the cervix and this is the uterus let me i'm just you know i'm showing you a vague diagram okay now this vagina it is derived from embryologically it is derived from the upper two third okay the upper two third of the vagina is derived from mullerian ducts okay so mullerian ducts are forming the upper two third of the vagina not only upper two third of the vagina okay even the cervix fallopian tubes uterus all these are derived from the uh, mullerian duct but the lower one third of the vagina is derived from uro genital swellings okay now the lower one third of the vagina is derived from the uro genital swellings a very important mcq okay now after saying this let's let's uh, deal about the uh, now we have discussed the secretions blood supply nerve supply nerve supply is again from the you know that internal pudent uh, is, is the pudendal nerve which is supplying the even vagina now developed from we have upper two third is upper two third is derived from the mullerian ducts and the lower one third is derived from the urogenital uh, urogenital sinus okay the same thing developed from it you know it was uh, it's a timing mistake now let's discuss about antiversion and anti flexion let's discuss about the topic of anti version and anti flexion what exactly they are you know so most of the students they will be getting confusion over here okay they they, they exactly don't know what is anti version and anti flexion let me show you so that you will be having a you will be getting a clear idea okay now once concentrate guys here so you know this is a vagina which i am showing you cervix and uterus is there now once concentrate i am drawing the lying long axis of the vagina this is the long axis of the vagina now i am showing you the long axis of the cervix okay i have shown you the long axis of vagina and long axis of cervix now these two are making an angle okay these two are i'm making an angle of a 90 degrees okay 90 degrees acute angle so this angle is known as okay this angle is known as anti version okay so anti version is an angulation between a vagina and cervix now let me show you one more angle okay this angle the long axis of the uterus 
and the long axis of cervix, the long axis of uterus and long axis of cervix are also making an obtuse angle, okay, which is almost around 120 to 130 degrees. This angle is known as anti flexion. Okay, so anti flexion is an angle between uterus and cervix. The angle between cervix and vagina is anti version. Now, like, you know, why we are discussing this? What is the importance? Most of the students will be thinking vagina, cervix, and uterus they are lying in one single line or they are lying in one single plane. That's not true. Okay, they are not lying in just like this pen, they are not lying like this. Okay, they are more angulated, there is an angulation between each other. Okay, now because of this, no, uh, you, you, you should know this. Okay, this angulation between uterus, cervix, and vagina. Okay, now after discussing about the topics of antiversion and antiflexion, let's discuss about the uterus.